remembered regularly. And uh, in a classic traffic light analogy, that red light is getting bigger and longer. And the forecast uh, it, it is not as solid as it was. And really, it is a tale. 2008 is a tale of two years. First six months were strong, and after that, it started to fall off, and it fell off quickly. On your chair, you will see uh, copies of our magazine and uh, One Plus. And in there, and you're probably amongst the first to get it, is a study that we do every year with called Future Watch with American Express. And it will tell you some insights, some real specific insights into what our community of 25,000 members is thinking. One of the interesting metrics about that, and I guess this really goes to people want to know what the question is, is what's going to happen? We actually had a 60% increase in responding to the survey. Typically, we get 15, 1,600, because it's a fairly intense survey. We had almost 2,700 people respond this year. And that really speaks to the, to the interest that people want to know what's going on uh, in the business. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, here in Atlanta. So looking at the bottom line on the number of meetings, um, 2008 was forecast to be down 1%. And you see last year's report, they said, well, why are they going to be down? It's because the meeting professional said, we don't have any more time to do meetings because we're so busy with meetings. What a difference a year makes. Bottom line, is down 4%. This year, you know, it's not, it's not catastrophic because I think the media would have you believe, but the survey says the number of meetings will be down about 9%. Looking at attendance, uh, again, last year, we, the planners responded had high hopes of a growth at 19%. And indeed, I can tell you, um, you know, when we had our, our summer meeting, we were, we were up in terms of attendance, you know, 14, 15%. So that number was not unrealistic. This year, we're expecting a decline of around 5%. I want to talk about some influencing factors, and, and I think this bodes very well for your community. No, no surprise, cost, cost, cost is really one of the, uh, the key drivers of uh, planners making decisions. And Atlanta fares very well in this. There's a reason that I think Atlanta is one of the top convention destinations in the country, and it's the value you deliver to your to your planners. They all know that, and now that that value proposition is going to be even more important going forward because everybody's looking for value, and you know, it, it, it's not just cost; it's the value you get. And in Atlanta, which is one of the reasons we think is we get great value, our members are getting great value here. But I, I want you to look at the next one, airlift. That has risen significantly in the minds of planners. We all know what's happening in the airline industry. And the ability for, you, for attendees to get in and out has never been so vital. You can see that that meant 25 that 25% of the people say that's one of the most uh, key decision-making criteria. And of course, Atlanta fares very well. You have a wonderful airport that's close to the city. Flying into Atlanta is affordable, and you can fly to Atlanta from just about anywhere in the world. That's a huge value proposition at this time, when the number one challenge for people getting into meetings is the time they spend away from their business. You can get in and out of Atlanta quickly and affordably. The next thing that we're going to be talking about at our conference is government policy attack. And I, and I, I choose the word attack deliberately here. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the language, yes, our, uh, on Tuesday, the United States US Department of Treasury announced the restrictions not only on executive compensation, but in there, in the way that uh, TARP recipient organizations are spending their money, and it specifically calls out conferences and event centers. Well, uh, as Ann pointed out, uh, our industry is not going to just stand here and take that. We come together as a coalition under the leadership of the <coughs> Travel Association, and we are not going to be part of the problem, we're going to be part of the solution. In fact, some of the things that are in the regulations proposed by the Treasury Department are actually elements that we have been educating our members on for 10 years. The importance of delivering a true business return on investment, the importance of having policies in place. Those are all entrenched in our membership DNA, right down to the certifications that they receive from us. And that's going to be a big topic of discussion at our conference coming up here in Atlanta. And I can't tell you the interest that, that's taking place all over the world in the fact that our general session is going to be webcast live, and we're going to have uh, Roger Dow, who's the CEO of the U.S. Travel Association, and also Christine Duffy, who's president of one of the largest travel companies in the world, Maris Travel, talking about this and talking about the industry response that's going to take place. And that's going to fare very well. It's going to be a big part of the buzz that's created. We hope it's going to drive a lot of media attention, and it's going to happen here in Atlanta. The good thing, though, about meetings and events 
is they are still extremely relevant. And I think the example that Annie used of Dallas, where they had the highest turnout ever this year, more world leaders and, and CEOs turned out in Dallas than ever before this year. And the answer is real, the reason why is real simple. The top line on this chart shows that event marketing makes and events deliver the highest ROI in any marketing channel. Better than web, better than print. That's why it makes sense. And to have government policy regulations put on a, on a vehicle that drives business at a time when we need to be competitive and be successful is really counterproductive. And that's why the human beings are part of the solution, not the problem. So you cut down on meetings, you take away innovation, you take away competition. That's not what this country needs right now, particularly when you've got companies trying to repay loans. They're going to be successful, they're going to have to get together and, and meet and, and drive their business. And that's why I'm using that makes sense. We are a global organization, and one of the things that um, we'll be talking about in our, in our meeting is the whole status of global competition. It is an incredibly busy world uh, industry. Uh, destinations all over the world are getting into the meetings business. And while we can say, you know, it's only, uh, we only need to focus on what's happening here in the United States, people outside the United States are clamoring for our business. For business. And part of what we talked about is the globalization of our industry, what that competitive set looks like now. And again, a land and well position to benefit from that because of your airport, because of your access. Um, this is an opportunity, not something to be feared by this community. And I, I know already William and his team are very aggressive in that space, and it will pay dividends for you. We talked a little bit about air transport, but it is a factor. And uh, I've been told that uh, some of the data that we got from uh, OAG online, air, online airline guide is uh, not quite right for Atlanta. But you can see what's happening in the United States in terms of declines in air capacity. And well, Atlanta is now up two points, and I, I'm not surprised. But you can see what's happening. And this is on the radar screen of all of our plans, because if you can't get to a destination, you can't have a meeting. And uh, those destinations that have solid air access are increasingly on the minds of the planners right now. And you can see, just by looking at the facts, um, where the opportunities lie. Finally, the one, the one thing that is here to stay is green and sustainability, or corporate social responsibility. Um, Amongst all of the challenges that we see in our economy right now, this is something that we see as not going away. Um, this is a survey that we do to our members, and there's some information on that in the future watch. But um, when we ask uh, chief marketing officers in Fortune 1000 companies about their green and sustainability and corporate social responsibility policies, that 66% of them have them now. That's a 38 point increase one year. And um, when we ask them about why do you put them in place, it's because it's not because it's a good thing, it's because the customers demand it. And I know Atlanta is a pioneer in that in terms of a community. I, I, you can see it um, in terms of the bills. You have a LEED certified conference center now. Um, this is a great opportunity for any city now because planners are increasingly looking at that because chief executives of major corporations have this on their agenda. And, and this is something, how does that translate into the means business? That is something that we will be discussing and continue to educate our members about um, because it is something that is, is good for business, it's part of the society expectations now for any corporation. So again, I believe Atlanta is, is well positioned uh, to do that. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that makes me different, different and why having this event in your community at this time is so vital. Our industry is going through a lot of changes. And you know, we have an opportunity to either say, you know, we don't like those changes, or we have an opportunity to lead the change. And that's what this conference is all about. It's about innovation, it's about leadership, and the fact that we're doing it here in Atlanta at this time goes very well for us and very well for